Five. You got your magnets? Okay. Just me and my son this afternoon. So if you guys hear anyone running around making a lot of noise, that's my, my five-year-old running around the other side. I have no control uh, over what he's doing right now. So um, so if you hear screaming in the background, just the boy, all is good. So how's everyone doing? Um, basically, I'm going to try to keep this short. I'm going to try to go uh, about 60 minutes, uh, not a whole lot more than that. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about and share was um, uh, the, the two-day event that we did uh, last week. Coach Hewitt, how you doing? If you, if you guys are here, uh, pop in the comments. Let me know real quick. Um, but we did we did an event uh, uh, a couple weeks ago uh, down in Alabama where we went and worked with the Varsity Girls program for two days, uh, and we installed their entire offense uh, in those first two days, or at least the the foundation of the offense. Um, they wouldn't have to add any more if they didn't want to, um, but of course they'll start adding wrinkles and, and quick hitters and, and and maybe a couple more sets that they're going to be working on soon. So I just kind of wanted to, to to walk through and and I actually I was trying to pull up some film. Um, but I am actually having a problem uh, downloading the video right now to actually pull up. So it, I'm going to try a couple couple different things. If we can make it work, we can make it work. Um, and if not, we will just adjust and go from there. Um, but anyway, so let's see if I make that big on the other side. At least I wanted to play it in the background. So I might be working with the tech a little bit. But anyway, so we spent um, so two whole days. And I'm going to show you how we installed the, the entire offense in one day. We pretty much installed everything 510 on the first day. Hey, hey Phil, how you doing? And then on the second day, um, we pretty much did everything 505. Then we came back. Uh, we had some new players that weren't there on day one, and we reinforced some stuff 510. Um, but by the end of the two days, they had a, a very, a very good hand on the offense, and they were actually executing the offense steps ahead of what they, what I was expecting them to do. So um, let me see if I can. Uh, pull this video up over here while, while I kind of talk you guys through this. So, hey, Jeff from Spokane, Washington. How you doing? Hey, Brian, how you doing, coach? Howard's here. Phil's here. I'm actually going to pop this, pull this window right over here. But anyway, how are, how are you guys, uh, how are you guys doing with uh, the install of your offense? You guys kind of let me know there. Um, has your season started? Have you guys started official practices yet? What are the biggest hangups uh, you guys are having in your offense? I'm actually going to pop up and see if we can't pull this on to our screen. Let's see, primary display. Decker, how you doing, Coach? Coach's Cookbook from Mendez, Texas. How you doing, Coach? It's good to see you guys here. I think what we got to do here is... To do secondary display. For some reason, my screens aren't switching over, so I apologize. Yeah, as you guys are coming in, keep letting me know. Uh, so, Coach, you said just pays post is having to, um, your post is having to hold the ball too long and low on point. So you're trying to figure out the pace of the Princeton offense. <clears throat> See, uh, Coach Ziegler, uh, Brian, you're starting October 22nd. Right, girls start I think a week before the boys in Ohio. So. Um, and then Washington State, you guys are, uh, Jeff, you guys are November 15th. So you're studying and prepping and planning right now. Phil, you haven't started quite yet. Phil, you're in, uh, you're on East Coast, aren't you? So I tell you what, let me, let me go through these slides first and I'll try to pull up some video here towards the end, make sure I, I can get all my, my stuff working here. So anyway, <clears throat> we pretty much implemented three strategies, uh, this weekend. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, is what parts of the Princeton offense are you running? Because you can run as much or as little of the Princeton offense as your program needs. Okay, so the three big strategies that we use to install the Princeton is first you have to choose the right offensive sets that match your personnel. So the first thing I did with Coach Scott down in Alabama is we got on, on a Zoom a couple times, and before I traveled down there, we talked about his personnel. We talked about some of the sets and series that he wanted to run, and then I started throwing out suggestions because – I, I, I know the offense inside and out, top to bottom. I run at the, at the high school level with girls and boys. Um, but what I did was I took some of the ideas that he wanted to run. I'm like, well, let me take a little bit of, of my experience. And this is what I think from the way that he was describing his players, and he showed me a little bit of film about this is what I, I, I kind of think would work for you. Um, and actually, once we got down there, started installing, we made a couple adjustments on the fly, which you're going to do in practice. Once you start putting in the offense, you're going to – 
especially if it's the first time you've seen the specific action, you're going to say, well, I can see how this was working a little bit, but then I can see how this, this is working, but this right here is still a little bit clunky and I don't think they're figuring it out. And I think I need to rethink how I need to approach this with them. So um, in that aspect as well, um, we made adjustments on the fly. And um, we actually added something different. We took something away from them and, and it made it smooth. Now, I, I, we were going to put in, so this program ran the low series. Um, they, had a, they have a low post player that is not a good back to the basket low post player. So we re, basically ran low post without throwing the ball into the low post. So that was one of the adjustments that we made for them. And depending on your personnel, every, I, th I feel like everyone's Princeton should look just a little bit different. Um, so that's why I, I, I teach the offense the way that I do so that you can learn as much of the offense as possible and then only pick and choose what works best for your program. Pick and choose the offensive sets that's going to work for your kids. Um, and, and that's exactly what we did. The second, so the, the first strategy is, is choosing the right sets of the Princeton offense, the right series, the right combinations, uh, the right counters to go from one series to the next or, or however you're going to execute your offense. The second strategy is where to start. You know, how to easily organize and rep, actually get repetitions in the offense, in practice. Um, and now if you're starting out in season, you're going to do this in about 30 minutes. I mean, whatever, however much time you spend. I've got a couple ideas I'm going to share uh, about how much time that you're going to spend on the offense in practice. I would spend about 35 minutes a day in practice. And I would probably cut that back down to 30 minutes as we started getting a groove. Um, sometimes early in the season, I might spend 40 minutes on practice. I feel like it takes a little bit more time to get the offense in than the defense. I feel like the defense, boom, it, the defense is, is effort and repetition and, 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 um, and, and attitude. It just kind of, kind of learning the movements and it's not as complicated as some of our offenses. So sometimes early on, I'll spend more time on the offense, a little bit less on D and then sometimes we'll, and, th and then it'll kind of even out where I spend about 30, 35 minutes on offense, 30, 35 minutes on defense. Uh, 30 minutes skill work. And then the, the last part of practice, the last 30 minutes of practice is basically anything special situation, everything full court. And then we try to also combine our defense and offense in that uh, last 30 minutes of practice. So um, where do you start? How do you execute it um, in 30 minutes a day um, if you have a two hour practice or even an hour and a half practice? Um, and then the third strategy is we really talk about how do you level up your role players? How do you get your role players to be threats in the offense? Um, that's one of the big things that we have to do is, is if you just try to hide players, I, when someone's, when you're scouting someone else, you're like, yeah, that player is not a threat. That player is not a threat. We can help off of him and let's, let's help off of him. Let's help off of her and just kind of leave them alone. If that kid beats us fine. Okay. I think that hurts you offensively. If you're trying to do that, if you're trying to hide players. So I'm going to show you, when we show you a little bit of video, I'm going to show you the skill work that we are working on. Um, that we teach all of our players to score in the post. That's one of the big secrets. Every single player is learning to score in the post. And, and um, when I pull up the video, as soon as I get my, my screen and all this figured out, as soon as I pull up the video, you guys are going to see um, some of the skill work that we were doing. And, and actually, some of the better post low post players were their guards, surprisingly enough. And I love posting post players up. Uh, I'm sorry, I love posting guards up because – uh, the big thing that we talked about over this two-day clinic, and we had we had like five or six coaches there in person watching. We had about 10, 15, 20 coaches watching online. And um, and uh, I, I think one of the biggest things was like, like I think everyone could see some of the, their best post players were their guards. Um, even some of the guards were like, sometimes they said, this guard's great in the post. It just depends on who's guarding them. But guards don't know how to guard in the post because how often do you work with your guards in the post? You don't. So unless you have that that weird kid that's a, that can kind of guard a wing and a post, um, guards just don't they don't know if to put their forearm in, in, in the in their back. They don't know if they're supposed to chest up. They're not supposed to have to give a little bit of space. It's kind of weird for a guard to guard down there. And then once you do get a guard down there and you're trying to make moves to score, guards are going to be jump happy. They're going to want to jump up in the air. And I think we can get their guards in foul trouble as well a lot. Um, you know, uh, guards aren't 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 very uh, disciplined on just walling up and getting in a stance and sliding. They're, they just haven't been down there like your post players have. Okay. So th those are the kind of the three strategies. And it, it really showed um, uh, in the video and on the court uh, with these players. And it, 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 
this was probably one of the best jobs I've ever done personally coaching the offense. It was really excited. I was really excited for the, for this group of girls. And, um, <laughs> what it, I walked in that when, when the girls got there Saturday morning, uh, it, it was really funny because, uh, first of all, coach came over and he told me, he's like, first of all, he's like, they're nervous. I'm like, well, why are they nervous? He's like, well, they, they think you're going to be a yeller and a screamer. Evidently they've had a yeller or a screamer when they were younger players uh, in their youth level. And they're like, well, they're a little nervous. I was like, first of all, I was like, I reassured him, like, listen, I'm, I'm not a yeller. It's like, I am loud. I can be loud, but I'm not going to yell and scream at you. I'm, I'm just want you to hear me so that you can get better, which is kind of funny that they, they, they picked up on that. Um, and then the second thing was he must've told them, yeah, we are bringing in a coach to help us install our offense, but he must've told them it was a Princeton offense. And he said, and, and he told me that they said, that, listen, they, they don't think that they can do this. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, they, they don't think they're smart enough to run the Princeton offense. And this is exactly what they told him. Say, so listen, coach, I don't, we, we can't run them. We're not smart enough. And they, and usually it's the coach you have to say, your players are smart enough. Okay. It's just how you teach them. Usually it's, it's when I, when, now that I'm working with coaches, it's, it's trying to convince the coach, no, your players are smart enough. You just need to teach them how to learn the offense through repetition and emphasis. And once we got through the first two hours, uh, the, the first session was uh, two hours um, and actually about 40 minutes was, we spent about 40 minutes on skill work, um, just building the foundation. Um, and, and, and once we got, once we finished through that first, uh, two hours, they started to have a pretty good, better grip on it than what I think they, once we started the second session, um, it, it was really clicking and, then, and, and, it, and it was really moving. It was really good. And then by day two, when we started going five on five, I was trying to segment it and just going through everything step by step by five by five. But as soon as something wasn't open, they just instinctively went to the next thing and they were getting backdoor layups and they were getting uh, girls in the post and they were scoring. And it was really exciting, really exciting to see. And I think that they were when when we when they left and walked off the floor, they were really excited. But you have to decide what sets. So I, I know I'm kind of running down the rabbit holes, but I'm just really excited for this group of kids and. And um, they're going to, they're going to, they've got a huddle cam and an NFHS cam where I'm going to try to watch them live this year. I'm really excited to do that. So, but where, where you decide to start depends on your personnel. There are four series, there are four sets, four series um, that, that you can go with. It's the low post series, the chin series, the point series, and the open series. And there are multiple ways to run each series. Um, I've had coaches say, well, I, I've seen somewhere else where, they say you teach the most difficult one first. So teach the point series and then teach chin and then teach low, then teach open. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, um, I made this mistake my first year as a head coach trying to put in, I put in everything and it, it didn't take, I mean, I got everything in in about a week to two weeks. Um, but what happened was, is I didn't adjust the offense to the personnel I had. Okay. And I was trying to run the offense the same way the Air Force Academy ran because that was my biggest influence. And what happened was I started, I put in everything in it the exact same way that they ran it and we could execute and run it. But once we got into a game, okay, sometimes, you know, we could only run, there were, we had to, all right, open series, scratch that. Take, there's no open series. Okay. We're only running point and chin and that's all we're running. We're only running low post and chin or low post and point. We had to take things away so that we could execute better. Um, so what I've been telling coaches is like, take the series that best compliment that complements your best players first. So if you've got a really good low post, uh, or a really good post player, that's a really good back to the basket post, but put in low post first. Okay. If you don't have a low post player, maybe you're, um, but, but you have a low post, that's a good decision maker and you have guards that are really good ball handlers, really good off ball screens, really good attacking the basket. The point series is a good place to start out. Okay. But if, if you have, Guards that are more average, that aren't good ball handlers, that aren't good attackers, that aren't good decision makers with the ball on the dribble, I, I wouldn't run the point series. I would run chin. I would run the low series, uh, maybe even open, where there's not as much dribbling. Um, point series aside, running low, chin, or open, you don't have to at any point in time dribble the ball more than two or three times, ever. And it's usually in a straight line, and usually that second or third dribble is just gathering the ball. And, and we talked about that a little bit. When they get stuck, they got to be able to back dribble or they got to be able to gather the ball in a tight situation. Then they pick it up and then we can go back door and get handoffs. Um, so with this group, we were actually running the low post series, except they didn't have the back to the basket player. So we're like, like, let's run low because 
I, I should call the low post the low and low post series because we throw the ball to the wing, we're in our low series. When the ball goes to the low post, now we're low post. But both of both of them are are, are the hub. We kind of use this as the hub of the offense. Um, and uh, while their their low post player was not a good back to the basket player, she was excellent at the high low level. So if she's gonna or or ducking in. So what we did is we kind of adjusted the low series and then how we got in the point series. Then we worked on some high-low action. So if they're going to deny her on the high side when she turns and pivots, and, and you'll see on the video, she's a strong kid. I couldn't move her. She's a strong kid. She could get high-low all day long. Okay, and if they take away high-low, then we're going to get back doors on the next thing. Or if, they, or if they're not denying on the high side, we're, we're ducking. So we're adjusting the offense to their players, okay, and, and, and going through it step by step. So you have to do that. With your, um, you really have to take a look at your personnel and then really have a good grasp of all of the offensive sets. Say, which, what's going to work best for us? And then how can I adjust the low post series uh, to fit our personnel? How can I adjust the point series? You can run the point series and not throw the ball to the point. Okay, what we would do is we would say, hey, we would counter out of point into the next thing. So if you, ha- you want to run point series type actions, uh, but not throw the ball to five, there are ways to do that. Okay. So now the, the next strategy was how do you easily organize and rep the offense in practice? This is the biggest, I think this is what coaches, I think this is one of the, also one of the biggest things coaches got out of, of watching this clinic was we don't, you can't show them the big picture. Kids walk in the gym, I can't show them, okay, this is the low series and this is, we're going to throw the ball here and then if, we're going to try to score here. If that's not open, we're going to do this. And this is the action we're going to do there. And if that's not open, then we're going to go to the next thing. If that's not open, we're going to, now let's circle back to the beginning. Now, if you can't throw it there and you can't throw it there, now we're going to do this instead. You can't show that's too much to show them in, in one setting. They, they just won't, they won't grasp it. They'll be lost. So we use the method we call the progression method where we teach it in step by step by step of this is what happens first. Okay. Let's rep that. Okay. This is what happens. Okay. Now, uh, let, let's, let's, let's run the low series and we're not going to throw it down there. So let's snap it to the point. The first scoring action is a high low. So let's work on that. Throw that high low, throw that high low, throw that high low. Now the high low is not open. So what's the next thing that happens in the offense? Okay. If the high low is not open. Okay. Now we're going to play opposite and we're going to go back door. And what happens is, so then we do, and we work on, and so we worked on the first part. We worked on the high low for 10 minutes, running the offense, getting to the high low, throwing the high low for 10 minutes. And, and, and I did not exact, and sometimes maybe even 12 minutes. We spent a lot of time on, on that one action. And then we spent 10 minutes on the very next action. And this is, can you imagine 10 minutes just working on one action? You're not running the offense all the way through. You're just making one, you're making two passes and throwing a high low. You're making two passes and then playing opposite and throwing it back door. We do that for 10 minutes. And then what happens if the back door is not open? Well, let's, we're going to lift the player from the corner. We're going to reverse it. We're going to throw it in the post and score. We do 10, we do that for 10 minutes. And they're getting so much repetition on each thing, step by step by step by step. Uh, one of the biggest concerns Coach Scott had was, "Hey, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, what, what do you feel good about? But what do you worry about the most about about these two days?" He's like, "Well, I, I worry we're going to put all this in and they're going to forget it because we start practice in two weeks. I, I feel like they're going to forget everything." I was like, "I promise you, they won't, because they're going to get so many reps. It's going to be, it's going to be a habit." They're, they're not going to under, they're not going to understand how to play any other ball goes here. We do this ball goes here. We do this ball comes here. We do this. And by day two, once we put a defense on it, the first time that something wasn't open and before I could yell stop or dead, they played opposite. They went back door. The back door wasn't open. They hit the next player. They threw it in the post and they went and scored. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't done that yet. Five on five. We did a five on oh on day one. We didn't do five on five yet, but, but they got, I looked at coaches like, you know, day one to day two, they 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 know what they're doing already, and, and I think that was his biggest concern. And I, I think that that's one that by the time we left, he's like, I, I think we're in pretty good shape now. Now on day one, they can start at a sprint. But if you teach it, and again, they don't have you don't have to be smart. You just have to be trained, right? You don't you don't have to have a a Princeton Ivy League IQ to run the Princeton offense. Okay, you just have to train your players, and and you have to rep. All right, repetition is the mother of all skill. Whatever they do over and over and over again, they will do and they will execute. Okay, and so and, and if they're getting if they're getting poor quality reps over and over, then they're going to execute poorly. If they're getting quality reps, then they're going to uh, execute with co- with quality. So, 
So, I, uh, Jeff, you're asking. Let me see if I can pull this up on the screen so you guys can see it. So, uh, Jeff says real quick. So, um, are you doing those progressions always with five kids? Or you break it down with three, et cetera, to get more reps at the key parts. That's a great question. Always five kids. Always five kids. Um, reason is this. If you're doing something 3 on 4 on and you're repping it, three, let's just say 3 on you're repping it 3 on 3 on 3 on One of the biggest, uh, I, I get this from reading React coaches a lot. Their, their offense always stalls when a kid forgets to fill. Kids always forget to fill to the next spot. They get to forget to fill. We're, we're, we're over here, we're, we're passing and we're cutting, and that kid forgets to fill. Well, typically what happens is when you're installing an offense 3 on you're working the, the 3 on kids, those three kids are working on the passing and the cutting and hitting the next guy, and then we pass and cut again. But it's the kids that are uh, not in the immediate action that are filling spots. They're not getting re those reps. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's something that was a big talking point because the coaches that were there and that were online watching, they were saying, well, well, how do you, why do you do a five? Well, can we, how do you break this down? Three on four. And I was like, well, you don't want to, because you have kids on the floor that aren't getting reps. And then if you want to do it three on three, what happens is when you do things three on oh, three on three, you're turning it, you're turning the game into a drill and the kids will get good as they, they get good at seeing what's in front of them. And they get good at executing on uh, um, on the three on three. And then what happens if they, they're going to drive a certain way or they're going to make a certain pass. And if you don't tell them, and, and sometimes we don't see it as coaches, we'll just let it happen. Then we will put five players on. There's two defenders on the floor that they can't see because they're not part of the drill. So what happens when you go back and put it all together, five on five, now they have to relearn. You can't make that move that you just tried to make because there's a defender there that you can't see. So it's really important to show them, um, do, do everything 5-1-0 so you get reps in the non-scoring action or on, on the weak side of the floor because the ball will always come back around to every single player. And I think you have to always do it 5-1-0, 5-1-5. Uh, the Princeton guys do everything 5-1-0, 5-1-5. Makes perfect sense? Yeah. And um, so do you suggest rotating them to different spots? So yeah, so this is something that, in in this and when we use the progression method and ask coaches that I think I think Phil Phil's watching and he was there, um, or, or I think Phil watched online is um, when we do the first action. So let's say we're going to run. Let's say we're running low post. Let's throw it to the wing. All right. Let's feed the low post for ten minutes. We're going to let our five man um, go score for ten minutes. We're going to make the pass, throw in the low post. We're going to run our low post corner, low post cut, whatever we're doing. The five man's going to go score. We're going to do that for 10 minutes. And in that 10 minute period, it is the player's responsibility to rotate on their own and fill all of these spots. I was telling the coach, I was listening. I was like, dude, we cannot micromanage this. Uh, to everyone rotate counterclockwise and everyone go to your left. And then you go to this spot and offense to defense and, and, and all of this kind of stuff. Because what happens is the kids are focusing at, at this point, the kids are focusing more on, they're more worried about rotating than they are about they're, they're they're watching the rotations and they're not they're not watching their teammates on the floor, so they're not getting uh, mental reps by watching what's going on. So we we give them we give them whether it's five minutes in that segment or ten minutes when we're repping that one scoring action and all of the steps leading up to that scoring action. Once that first group is going, the, the next group goes, and then the first group go get a different spot, or if you need to run the same spot twice, run the same spot twice, then go get a different spot. And we just do that for five minutes, for five minutes, for five minutes before we move on to the next thing, the next action. What if they take that away? Well, this is what we do next. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a great question, and that's definitely um, that's definitely a big part of, of what we were doing. So, and that's a, that's 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 uh, that's that's how we teach it, and, and that works the best. So, so basically, yeah. So this is kind of like our progression method, and. and what we call stacking. I'll talk about stacking a little bit here uh, on on the third the third strategy. Um, but you know we'll feed the low post. We'll cut to the corner and then we'll do that action. And then we'll on the low post catch. We're gonna back. We're gonna back. And you guys have seen me do this on the board on on all of my three day events. Um, we're gonna backdoor the point. We're gonna hit that kid backdoor. We're gonna do that for five minutes. Okay. Now the back door is not open. So now five man go score up. We're gonna do that for five minutes. And everyone's gonna rotate all these spots. Okay, now the, the five man, uh, the back door is not open. Five man can't store. Now we're going to snap it to the point and shoot a three. We'll do that for five minutes. And everyone, all of your players are rotating spots and getting, learning all four guard spots. And, and sometimes you have a guard run the guards and the big spots. 
um, during that five minutes, they're getting reps. And, and it's just not one day. They don't have to learn it in one day. They can learn it over five, six, seven days. And, it, and, it, and it's really, um, it, it really works out for them. So here's a, here's a good question. So I'm excited to start teaching, but right now we're only allowed to have four player workouts until the middle of November. So it's confusing for them now with only four using and using a cone as the fifth player. What I would do, um, what I would do in your situation is, is I would step on the floor as coach and I would run the fifth player. That's, I don't know if you can do that, but that's what I would do. Or if you're only allowed to work out with three kids, I, I know some schools are only allowed to work out with three kids, get you an assistant coach. You guys be the other two guys so that they can see what's going on. Um, some, see, sometimes there are creative ways to do that. I don't know if you're allowed to do that or not, but, but, but think of that as, as an option. My parachute's spinning here as the next slide's pulling up. So, um, so the third strategy now, so the, the first, again, just kind of recap, the first strategy is choosing the right sets, the right offense, okay? The, the, right, the right actions that you're, um, that's going to work for your personnel. The second one, put it in in a progression method style, step by, this happens first, this happens second, this happens third. The third strategy is how do we level up your role players? How, how, do, how do we make them more effective? How do we get them to execute? How do we level up your role players' IQ? Okay, and how do we do that without alienating your best players and get and convincing your best players to buy into what you're doing? Because sometimes your best players in a different offense has the ball a lot, and now they don't. Okay, so um, I'm not sure what my next slide is. So this will be interesting. Um, so um, let me pull this. Let me slide down here. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So we get everyone involved, and, and I like making all of my players a threat by teaching all of our guards to score in a post. I think, I think it's a natural thing that happens with, with, with in the Princeton offense. So we teach all of our guards to score in the low post. And what happens is you're going to find out some players are like, I'm not a good low post. I'm working on it, but I'm not the player, or maybe the matchup isn't there that night where you want the player um, in the low, where you, Hey, we don't, we don't want this guard in the low. See, actually this, this girls team, they were about, about six or seven guards who are better in the low post than they're, than they're big, than their number one big, they're starting five man. Um, so if we can get that five defender out of the way, and this is what we're trying to do, we can get those guards down there to score. And the way that we taught the scoring, and we're not teaching them to, you know, over the shoulder fake and drop step and try to jump over top. We're, we're teaching them uh, actually what we call slide hooks in the low post. So we're teaching guards and we're teaching our bigs as well, how to score over players bigger than they are by utilizing a hook shot, and this isn't this isn't Magic Johnson, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar hook shot over the middle where you have to be so good and talented uh, to finish those. But we're teaching them to get angles where they can get that. It's like a it's like an it's like an extended layup where they're reaching out away, and we, we teach them how to jump off one foot and score over top of bigger defenders. We teach them um, in everything that we did from our skill work um, to uh, uh, to how the offense works. We're teaching them a move and a counter move. So our role, you know, you have uh, you have the Gannon Bakers and, and the Michael Lancasters and the I'm Possible basketball uh, guys, and, and you have all these um, very they're teaching these very advanced skill work um, to all of these players, and I think that's great. I love that stuff. But at the high school level, we sometimes don't have maybe even one or two players who can execute or is ready for that kind of skill work because they haven't mastered the the, the fundamental stuff yet. So, um, so one of the things that we work on is we work, we want a move and a counter move. So when we're working on a ball handling, I want them to have a move to the right and I want them to have a move to the left. So we were working on in and out blow bys. Hey, come in here, stutter set, make a move in and out and go right. And then we're going to come up and make that same move in and out. Boom. Now we're going to cross over and go left. They only need those two moves. Okay. And, and we, we do that in our skill work. And then when we come in down the floor, Hey, point guard. When you're bringing the ball down the floor, you've got to, if you want to go right, you have to make an in and out, juke them left, and then and then come right or come down and, and juke them right if you want to go left. You have to have a move and a counter move. You have to be able to shift the defense to the left so you can dribble right or pass right. You have to juke, you have to move the defense to the right if you want to drive left or shoot left. Okay, so our skill work was well, it looked very simple. Um, the way that it flowed into the offense was 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 is seamless. I mean, the, the skill work that we, we taught is very, very strategic to what the offense is, what we're executing in the offense. 
So everything that we did skill work wise, they, I showed them exactly where that, that came up in the offense. Um, and, and in the low post, we're teaching a move, a slide hook. And then what happens if the defense comes and cuts that off? What happens if your defender turns you? We're going to teach them a reverse slide hook. Okay. And, and, and so we, we were really emphasizing on moves and counter moves. Uh, yeah, Robert, this is for well, the low post and everything in general. So the move and a counter move in the, in the low post was a slide hook, get across the land score. The counter to that is they take that away. Boom, we're going to get to the middle of the floor and we're either going to drop step if you're bigger, stronger than your uh, defender, or we're going to reverse slide hook on the other side. Um, but, but even if your, your point guards are coming down the floor with the ball in the right hand, they got to make an in and out. Juke them left so they can go right. They got to bring the ball down in the right hand, in and out, juke them right so they can cross over and go left. They just have, a, have to have a move and a counter move. Okay. So if you're trying to teach your role players, you know, um, Gannon Baker level, um, all, all, you know, all of this very fancy scissors behind the back, spin moves. Okay. They're not going to get very good at any of those. So, but we just want one good move, one good counter move. All right. And then the other thing that we talked about was changing speed, changing direction, especially with girls, especially, and even with boys, um, they are good at going one speed. We we're doing a, we were doing a, uh, what we, a move we call dribble moves. And if I didn't tell them what to do, and some of them still would revert back to this, they would start a half court. They would sprint to the cone, chop their feet, and then they would sprint to the basket. And, and to me, that's going one speed. So what we would force them to do is we say, hey, just walk up, just walk dribble up and walk to that cone. Now make a move and go zero to 60. All right. And that, these are the, these were basically the three big themes um, when it, when it came to individual skill work and then team plays, you have to have a move and a counter move as an individual, a move and a counter move as an offense. They take something away. But we have a counter to that. Okay. We need to go zero to 60. Okay. As a ball handler, we need to go zero to 60 as a cutter. We need to go zero to 60 as we execute our offense step by step. Ball gets moved. We take a look. We're zero. Boom. We dribble. We back door. That's 60. Boom. We pop back. We come off a drift. That's zero. And then we catch them off the drift. Boom. Now we're driving. That's 60. We want our players to be able to change their speed as well as changing their, their direction. Okay. And then the last, the big, this was one of the things that, that I think we spent most of the time repeating over and over again is, you know, we wanted them to be open. And we did not want them to get open. I wanted them to stand in a place where they are either going to be open or not open. So as, as, uh, as coaches were watching this and as things were happening, I would, I would say open or not open. And they had to make a decision. If it's obvious they're open, we have to throw it. If they're open, the ball has to go there. Okay. There's, there's, it is, there's no if, ifs, ands, or buts about it. If they're open on the wing, we throw it to them. Okay. If they're not open, we don't throw it to them. We go to the next thing. We counter and we go to the next thing. If if we're not sure, this is where you get in the most trouble. Is where, what if that's a good defender? They're not denying, but they're not packing it in. They're kind of in that gray area. That's when we want to start V-cutting, but I'm just telling what I'm simplifying. In the, the, we're trying to let the offense do the work. Okay, so the Princeton offense is going to do the work for your role players. Okay, now your star players are going to be fine in any offense, but I, I think with Princeton, you can... Um, if you can turn your other teammates into threats, they won't be able to gang up on your best player. Okay, so um, for, for example, Michael Jordan in the triangle offense. It was the Jordan rules in the 80s. Put them on the floor. Everyone Just make everyone else beat us. We're not going to let Jordan beat us. Okay, once they started running triangle, getting their teammates involved, it freed Jordan up like crazy. Okay, and that's exactly what we're trying to do with with Princeton and having that good balance. Okay, so we're trying to we're trying to raise the level of your role players, okay, by um, by giving them um, by giving them off, by teaching them moves and counter moves, easier ways for them to score. And what's going to happen within the offenses is some kids are going to find the parts of the offense that are good for them. That say, hey, hey, I'm I'm not a driver, but I'm a good shooter, so. My turn to score is when I come off this drift screen. When I come off this chin drift, that's what I'm looking for my score. If I'm not a shooter coming off the drift, hey, I'm not a shooter here, but I'm a driver. I'm looking for the drive. Okay, some players are like, well, hey, I'm just good in the low post, but I catch off the drift. I'm going to take one dribble, hit the next kid, let them run the offense. And the offense will actually help elevate your players themselves. And once they find that spot on the floor where they are a threat, that's what's going to help them um, uh, move over to the next to the next thing. So... Let me see now if I can actually. 
current application. Let's see if that works. For some reason, coach, I am stuck on one screen and I've just got to, um, there we go. Let's see if that, oh, I'm muted. Okay. Could you guys still hear me? Okay, good. I think, I think I'm back. All right. Very good. Let me see if this works now. There we go. Okay. So this is just kind of playing online. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the, the, the audio muted here while we're doing this. And I'll just kind of let this play in the background a little bit. Actually, I tell you what, most of our questions are about the offense. So what I'm going to do is just kind of fast forward past some of the skill work. I tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna go, I want you to see the post work. Okay, these are our slide hooks. And again, it's a, and I'm sorry, I do apologize if that's choppy, but YouTube would not, um, it was hard for me to get, get the video on my hard drive to start. But we're teaching them how to score on a post. And again, this is the very first time they've ever done this. So it's, it's definitely, you can see them struggling a little bit. And, and I'm like, take your time, make your moves, be patient. Um, and we're sliding across. And so we're going to, I have not taught them how to get into the post yet. Okay, but I'm teaching them how to how what to do what to do once they get the ball in the post. So they're in the post. And we're working on the skill work right now, and then later on in the offense, when I teach them how to get into the low post, then we're gonna now they'll already oh I kept the ball in the low post oh I know what to do now I'm gonna slide hook or I'm gonna slide and reverse hook, um, and and then on day two once we put the defense on it okay now it's. We actually, in our skill work, we actually started working on this, uh, these moves one-on-one. -on -one. We Instead of going one-on-o -on in the low post, we started doing one-on-one -on -one in the low post. Okay. And um, see, hey, hey, Terry, I see. So what are the progressions for point series? It's, it's a very, very long conversation outside kind of the scope of, of what I'm doing, but um, what I'm doing on this training. Um, but it, it's, it's, it depends on what point series you're running because you have point screen away, point over the top, point down the middle, um, what if point's not open? We can play point opposite. We can play point over the top. Um, you know, we can play point, play the other way. You know, there, there's all kinds of different things we're doing. Um, but but think of it, think of it when, when you're working through the offense, think of it this way. Um, where is the first scoring action in the Princeton offense, the way that you are executing the offense? Where is the scoring action the way that you, where's the first scoring action come from? And then, Let's say, okay, now that scoring action is not open, Terry. So what's the next scoring action? So Terry, if you're running point screen away, the first scoring action will probably be that backdoor cut. Well, let's throw that back door. Well, the next scoring action will be the back door is not open. The screener pops back. Let's throw the ball to, that, to the screener. Let's shoot that three. If you don't want them to shoot that three, don't rep that. Because the next thing that happens is the ball screen. Maybe you want to come off that ball screen and play. So that's the third scoring action. Hey, let's come off that ball screen and let's ball screen and roll. See if we get something. Okay. So. Um, so that, that's kind of how I think of, of what are the progressions. Well, what are the scoring actions? What's the first scoring action? What's the second scoring action? What's the third scoring action? Okay, and that's kind of what we're, what we're putting in there. Okay, I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit. Okay, here we go. So now we're running our low series. And one of the neat things about this is, is this is, uh, let's see where are we at again. Whoops, my bad there. Okay, we're also working on some back doors there. I think they were here five on zero. I think we're back to the five on zero stuff. Okay, good. <clears throat> so now you, you were asking earlier, so, you know, how do you rep it? So we've got five girls out right now, and, and then everyone else is behind them in line. So once we get through this this rep, that this whatever we're, action we're working on right here, once we get through this, the next group's going to go. Here you see how we're snapping it and how we're going high low. And we're going to do this for five or 10 minutes. Nothing but this is all we're going to do. And all of these players are just rotating from one spot to the next spot, from one spot to the next spot. Um, and then what happens is once we get to the point where the high-low is not open, then we're going to go teach them what the next thing is. Okay, and this, is a, and, and this was an adjustment that we made out of the low series that fit his personnel. Okay, uh, so Gracie down there in the low post 
She's not really good catching the ball back to the basket. They try to trap her. She's not really good passer back out, but she is really good at this high low. Okay, so if they're going to deny her a high side, we're going to teach them how to throw the high low. Now, uh, a little bit after day two, we also worked on if they're playing directly behind you and we snap it to the point, how we duck in. So we're working on, on multiple scoring actions, okay? So now, I think, let's see it. I'm not sure how much time we spent on this. So the next thing is, when that high-low is not open, what do you do next? Or if you're running point screen away, what, if the back door is not open, what's the next thing that you do? Okay, and, and we just go step by step by step from scoring action to scoring action to scoring action. So let's see, let's see where this pops up here. So now we're going to say, now they're playing behind. So we're going to play what we call point opposite because once the ball is at the point, we're running the point series. But if, if, if we don't throw the ball to the five, we're count, which we're not doing with this group because this group is not a point series team. Okay, we're going to run what we call point opposite and we're going to get on the other side of the floor and dribble at her, dribble at her, dribble at her, Chloe. Supposed to play opposite, get to that opposite elbow, throw that back door pass. Okay, and you're going to see them make, and they make a lot of mistakes. And so I just make, hey, do it again. Okay, you made the mistake. Boom, now she did. That was perfect. I'd like to see that pass led out a little bit further. Um, and but, but she made the mistake the first time. Then we corrected it and we moved on. Corrected it and moved on. Um, once you get going, I actually do a lot more. A lot. I, I stop them a lot less. I'll just say, hey, if they make a mistake, boom, get out. And then the next group gets in and goes. And I'll explain to them what. I'll, I do a lot of talking while, they're, while they are actually in, in the middle of the repetition while they're in the middle of executing the series. And, um, and that way we keep the flow of practice going. But sometimes early on, you will have to stop quite a bit more. Hey, you okay over there? All right, quick call. Sorry, that's the five-year-old. So, okay, so what, what you're seeing here is, is we're, we're, we're breaking down specifically, I, I should just turn the audio on so you guys can hear this. But basically what we're saying is, is the high low's not open? What's, what do we do next? Okay. And that was the whole, that was like the whole, um, that was one of the big, uh, topics of the entire, of the entire weekend. Are they open? Not open. Okay. If they're open, we're doing this. If they're not open, we're doing the next thing. So catch it, rip it, play opposite, get a back door. That's pretty good. And, and once we put defense on this, started doing this five on five, they got really good. They got, they got really good at this. Okay. Let's just, let's watch a couple more reps. And as you can see, we're working on the right side of the floor. Now we're working on the left. And this is what happens. So this, this uh, uh, girl up top, Reagan here at the point, she hasn't got to that spot yet. So she already forgot what to do. So sometimes it's, it's a little sluggish early on, but you have to tell the players who are outside watching, just watch the person in front of you and do what they do. Okay, and, and just watch, and, and you know, if you're on the wing, watch the wing person. If you're at the point guard spot, watch what they're doing. And then the next rep, they just get to do the same thing. And if they make a mistake and I call them out, then they're hopefully they're learning from the rep that they just watched. Okay, does that make sense? Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully that, hopefully that's clear. But you see us, we're working on the left side of the floor and the right side of the floor. Up, oh, went the wrong way. So she's supposed to go opposite. So I was like, go opposite. Some, sometimes make them, they make mistakes. They're good. And that was actually something that they would do in their previous offense. So part of this was also breaking them of old habits. There we go. Point, opposite, hit the back door. And you see we're spending a lot of time on this. Okay, I, I think one of the big mistakes we make as coaches, let me, let me pop back here. One of the big mistakes that we make as coaches is we speed through things. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just speed right through, right to the next thing, right to the next thing. And we won't, and, and when they don't execute in a game, we yell at them like, you know, what we're supposed to do this. Why aren't you doing this? And, and I have, to, I had to really do a lot of reflection. Like, like if, if my players are not executing on the floor, it's my fault because I'm not giving them enough repetition and practice. Okay. If, 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 because I, I thought about that, me as, as, as a player, there were things that it took me longer as a player to learn things than it did than some of my teammates. And if we didn't get the reps on that, I had to tell coach in one practice, we called timeout. He said, all right, let, let's come out and let's run flex now. And I had to say, we were just working on that week. And flex is probably the easiest offense to learn. And we probably worked on it for three or four days. And in the, in the heat of battle, and thank goodness that I was, I was uh, um, not scared enough not to speak up. I was like, coach, like, I can't, I, I can't remember flex. And, and he just like, 
All right, well, let's run this. And, and I, I kind of felt that like I should know this. Everyone else knows it, but I don't know it. And looking back, I'm like, I, 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 and, I, and I love my high school coach, but it's like, I don't, I don't think he saw that I needed more reps. Okay. And, and that's something that we need to self-reflect with coaches and have, have some self-awareness as coaches. Are we getting enough reps for our players? Because if they're, if they're you know, not executing in a game, Okay, if they're not remembering the plays, that's because we're not getting enough repetition with the plays or they're, or they're running a spot in the game that they didn't get repetition in practice. So if you're a set play coach, I've been an assistant coach on teams that ran a lot of set plays. We will put set we put new set plays in every week and this was kind of a, um, a, a, a pet peeve of mine. And we would varsity come down here and second group would come down here and we would, we would work on them. We'd come together and we'd play. Then we'd get in the game, try to execute on the set play and, and and all of a sudden, you know, we couldn't execute. Well, the first group could do it. Once we started subbing in, boom, no one could remember the plays. And it was just, all right, four out motion. And we would just run, we just let them play. And, and you know, that, that happens if we're not getting the reps, okay, in practice. We're not getting good quality reps and where they're actually executing in practice. They're not going to do it in the game. So we have to make sure we spend a lot of time on all these scoring actions, teaching them step by step by step by step. Okay. All right. Very cool. So that, that's that's pretty much what we did. So we 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 broke down the Princeton. We we showed them. We 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 tailored the the offense to their players. We tailored the offense to their players, and then um, and then you know we actually we were actually teaching a, a couple of our counters got in. We didn't teach chin first, and usually you know you can it, it, whatever you teach first. I, I would say, and that's not necessary. We, we had them so focused on, on this low series and our progressions and our progressions. Once we got to the part where we started teaching them chin, which they'd run a little bit of, but not a lot, that actually started to slow them down a little bit. So what we did, I was like, hey, coach, how about we take chin out of the picture right now? Because there's a little bit more skill work than what I think that they're ready for. There's a, there's a back dribble that happens. Um, and there's a little bit of something that I just don't think that they're ready for yet. I think you can get to it after your first three or four weeks of practice or two or three weeks of practice. Um, I think you can get, I think you should start putting in maybe week two. Um, but, but let's take this out right now so that we can get more reps on, 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 on more of this foundation stuff. And we did that and then and things started clicking real well. So sometimes, you know, I wanted to run the low series and, and all of our counters out of it. So they would never get stuck. They had a counter for everything. And I said, okay, now let's run this. We can get in the chin out of this. And once they started doing that, they started to forget the other stuff. So I was like, okay, so I had to quickly say, and we worked on it for a whole session. I had to, the next session I had to come back and say, listen, I think for this group in this two days, I think that's just a little bit more than what they're ready for. So let's let's take that off the table right now. Take that off the menu, and let's just let's just keep going with what we're doing, and we'll get we'll get in the chin later, okay? And that was the right decision for this group. It's good to, good saying I've heard about that is slow makes smooth, smooth makes fast. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So anyway, so that that's basically what I wanted to talk. I I wanted to share that experience with everyone. Um, because I, 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 there, I, I keep having a lot of coaches. Say, hey, can I still, uh, can we still watch this? Is it still available? It's not right now. Um, or the, what well, we had it, like it, there, there was a, a time period where you could actually watch me do this live or watch the replays, which, um, are not available to everyone now, just the coaches who've gotten that the first time, but there are still coaching asking if they want to see, uh, if they can still see replays of this. And I'm going to show you how you can, um, because actually, we actually recorded this. If, if you saw the video from that one angle, I actually had three cameras recording at one time. So I have three different angles of it. And I was actually, I had two head, I was mic'd up with two. I had one mic that was my wireless mic so that they could listen to me live and had another mic professionally. That was a better recorder that was actually recording the audio in my pocket. So I can make more professional videos out of it. But I, I wanted to ask you guys real quick because um, some of you are interested in this. Some of you might not be totally cool. Um, do you guys want to see how to get access to all of these on-court recordings? If you guys want to see, if you guys want to see, um, and, and I'll, I'll actually show you where I ha where I keep them and all of that. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. If you guys want to know how to actually get access to all of these recordings, where you can watch actually this whole clinic and another clinic that I did with the Varsity Boys program. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments real quick. Robert, you want to see it? Awesome, cool. Just keep popping in. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. If you guys are interested, Coach Schultz, you do? Awesome. Matt, yes. Awesome. Okay, keep those coming. Let me know. 
Um, and then we'll we'll go through this. I'll go this, through this fairly quick um, so that you guys can see it. And then I want to actually take you into um, the members area so that you can see everything that's part of this because it's it's really kind of cool. Let me pop pop something up here. There we go. On Facebook, yes. Howard, yes. A couple of yeses on Facebook. Jeff, yes. Uh, if you went through Chin and, and Point Coach, I did. And in this group, we we didn't go through Point. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on the Point series with this group, um, but we actually got the coaches on the floor because there there were five, there were, uh, three or four coaching staffs uh, there. And what we did is we spent some time with those coaches on the floor, going through what they wanted to run with their offense. So we did some. Uh, we did Point screen away with the coaches. Point over the top of the coaches, point down the middle with the coaches, um, and actually with the the boys program uh, that was not not this Alabama clinic, but one I did locally here in Ohio. Sarah, yes, Creighton, yes, Phil, absolutely. Um, we actually did work with the point series and, and chin more with them than I did with the girls. So um, definitely. So here, let me. Okay, so this is what this is what uh, we're calling the on court passport. This is everything that I am teaching on the court. Uh, is part of this program. And my computer is just a little bit slower than I'd like it to be. So hopefully these slides will pop through a little bit. Okay. So we did, so I, I've, I've done two summer camps. Um, one was a three day camp uh, with the boys program, which we went through, um, which we went three hours a day for three days. Uh, this girls program, it was actually more like six to eight hours a day, but we worked with the varsity and JV on the first day. And the second day we worked with the, we worked with the varsity twice. And then the coaches on the floor one time, we recorded everything with two and three cameras in both sessions. So it's kind of cool. I can actually, um, I can actually shift from one point of view to another. So we got better views of everything. Um, and, and that was really cool and fun to do. And I tell you, if these slides don't pop up a little quicker, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pop over to another screen because this is driving me nuts. I'm gonna do it. Okay, so it ended up being ended up being uh, ended up being over 20 hours so far that I have recorded of me actually teaching this offense on the court with players. I apologize. My screen is frozen, <laughs> but anyway, but we spent, um, uh, multiple very, we, we spent working, uh, on the prints and multiple variations and actions of each series, um, pressure releases. So when, again, one of the big themes is, are they open or not open your player? Whoever is, whoever has the ball as a quarterback, they must know is my teammate open or not open. And they have to make that decision, a split, split decision. Okay. Are they open or not open? If they're open, boom, throw it. If they're not open, boom, they have to know what the next thing is. So we always have pressure releases. We have counters, we have audibles, everything to keep the defense off balance. And then there's also a bunch of wrinkles and quick hitters. So if you're running chin and you're running chin over and over and over again, it's like throwing a fastball, a fastball, fastball, boom. And then we're going to switch it up and throw a curveball. We're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to pop this over here real quick and Make sure my audio is back. Yep, there we go. Okay, I should be, probably go a little bit faster now with this. So, so anyway, so there we go. Okay, so we put it. We put in the, uh, the low post series, chin series, point series, open series. Uh, both programs were primarily. Uh, they both ran their offense out of the low and low post series first. The boys got into uh, chin, point, and open. Um, the girls pretty much were just low post series and more so in the chin. Then we also worked with the open series with the girls program. Um, but again, we worked on multiple variations of each of the sets and series because you can run point over the top three or four different ways. You can run uh, um, you can run the low and low post series multiple different ways. You can run low post where we focus mostly on low post corner. I also taught the boys how to run low post cut, and we also taught the boys how to run low post screen away. And I, I told Chris that you don't want to run all three of these, but you want to pick the one that's going to work best for your personnel and get into the next thing that you want to get into that also works for your personnel. So when, when, when you're trying to learn the Princeton offense, your Princeton offense shouldn't look like a collegiate Princeton offense. You don't have the same players. Uh, you need to adjust the offense to, to what your players, uh, to your, the skill work of your players. Okay. So I need to zoom out now because it's just not, there we go. That's a little better. Okay. So there's 20, 20 plus hours of, of actual on-court instruction 
Um, what I'm also uh, giving with this program is, um, all, it's, it's just, again, it's just not X's and O's. It's also the skill work. These are actual practices. This isn't like, um, I, I've seen some other programs out there where just teaching you the X's and O's. We're actually teaching the, we're actually teaching the players. These are like real practice. I'm actually installing the offense that these teams are going to run. So even though if it doesn't end up being everything that you're running, you're still going to be able to see exactly how we install it. And it's going to give you that epiphany. Okay. Oh, I see how, I see how you're doing that skill work, that in and out blow bys, in and out crossovers. I see how that's helping you enter the offense or I see how that low post skill work is the slide hook. Oh, they take that away. I see how you're moving on to the next thing. So we also broke down, we did skill work in, in almost every single session. Um, I'm also giving you on, on top of all of the two clinics on top of the two camps, the, the boys and the girls, um, I'm also starting to upload um, uh, my personal practice film where I'm actually editing it and breaking it down. So it's just not like one long video. Um, I'm also breaking down uh, some of my game film as well. As, as soon as I get all of this, all of the girl, the boys film is almost done editing. I got uh, like 75, 80% of it uploaded already. And I'll show you that in a second, but I'm going to start doing the same thing to my, my game film when, for my teams when they were ex running and executing as well. And then I have got, um, uh, I've made practice plans for the boys three day clinic and the girls, uh, two day session so that while you're watching us install it, you can follow along with the practice plan and you can see our thought process of going from one step to the next step to the next step and, and how we do it in, in that progression manner. Okay. Now, even though you're watching us do it in the low series, um, now with the boys, we did it in the point series and you'll see that in the practice plan, but you'll, 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 you'll understand, Hey, you're going from one scoring action to the next. And sometimes there's a couple steps that happens in between, um, but 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 you're seeing exactly how it's designed and set up. So uh, two of the bonuses that come with this, um, I have a I have a um, I, I know I've shown you this before, but I've got I've got a binder. There's like 90 DVDs full of games. Some of these some of these games have multiple games on them, and I just dumped half of them on the floor. But I've I've got this binder full. Of, of Princeton offense um, games. And I'm actually uploading those for, for my viewing ability because I still have a DVD player and I still have a video cassette player, believe it or not. Um, but I'm trying to transition off of that. So um, I'm putting all of these games online, all of the Air Force games, Northwestern games, Princeton games, everything that I learned the offense through. I'm going to put those online so where you guys will eventually have access. It's going to take me a little bit of time to get to that, but you eventually have access to all of that. The next bonus is, is next year. I'm actually phasing out the three-day events. The free three-day events um, that I've been doing uh, have been awesome. Um, but I'm actually moving into something a little bit different for 2022. And, and I'll be announcing that um, hopefully January. I'll, I'll have some idea of, of, of what those two big events are going to be. Um, and I'm still going to be doing a ton of free stuff like, like the three-day events. Um, but I'm going to be delivering them a little bit differently. And I'll be announcing that soon. But if you want to come and see the next time that I do one of these clinics or camps, um, if you want to come in person and see the event, I'm going to give you a free ticket to that. Um, that also comes as, as a part of this program. Um, and this is the only time that I actually offer that free ticket right now. Um, and then actually next week, I'm going to start once a week for the next four weeks. And I, I tried to do this a little bit earlier, but it, it just, it just didn't work out for me. I'm actually going to do, um, a practice planning workshop once a week over the next four weeks. So if you guys jump in and you guys grab recordings, of these videos, um, once a week for the next four weeks, I'm going to get your feedback. So even if you can't be on there live, what are your, what are your practice planning questions? And I'm going to build out practice plans. I'm going to take you through the practice planning thought process. Um, and so that you can, um, see my mindset as we're building practices and, and how we do it with the low series. How do we do it with the point series, the chin series, the open series, how do you actually you know, decide what to do and how do you implement it step by step? Okay, I'm, I'm, this is going to be a live workshop and I'll probably do it. I, I haven't decided exactly what time of the day, but it's probably going to be like uh, every Tuesday for the next four weeks or something like that. Starting next week, starting next week. So everything that comes with this on court pen, and this is again, this is everything Princeton that I do on the floor with players. And actually I'm, I'm, I'm still got to work with a couple more groups. I'm still adding to this. Um, I'm not done adding to this. It's, it's not just these two camps and that's it. Um, I still want to work with, um, I actually have, uh, there's actually three schools that are probably going to have me out next year, uh, next summer or next fall. And I'm going to be recording those as well. And some of those teams are going to be more point heavy teams. And they're going to see a lot deeper into the point series. 
all of that's going to be uh, um, there as well. Hey, Jeff, yeah, sorry, you have to go. Yeah, just uh, I'll email you the replay, Jeff. I'll, I'll talk to you in a little bit. But um, I'm still adding, I'm still going to be adding on-court clinics to this. So I'm not done adding the videos to this. Um, but you're getting a skill work practice video that, that's inside all of these. You're getting access to all my practice film, um, all of my game film that I'm going to start breaking down so you can see how I execute it in practice, my players, how my players execute it in a game. Uh, my boys, then I'm going to go back and see if I can find some of my girls stuff, my, my JV girls and, and the varsity girls that I was an assistant with. Um, you're going to get physical, uh, or you're going to get PDF versions of the practice plans from these events. Um, and then you're going to get access to my DVD collection, free ticket to the in-person clinic that I'm doing next year. Um, actually, I, I might be doing multiple and we'll have that conversation when those are announced. It's still, still kind of out there. And then you're getting, um, we're going to do a four week practice planning workshop. And I'm really excited about that. So there's actually two more. Um, okay. So this is actually an old slide. I did not change this slide. So actually um, this, uh, um, at, at the point where I first did this, I only had done one camp. Now we've done two full camps and the videos are all available. Um, but in the future, again, I'm going to be adding more camps to this as well. So um, it, it took a, a, a lot of time and a lot of money to put these together. I've actually sold this before um, at $9.97 uh, a year and a half ago when we first started doing this. Um, the price will probably get back to that. But right now uh, for this week, for this, and this is the only time I'm going to sell this uh, course this year. Once the season starts, I've got a lot of stuff going on with the workshop and we've got uh, weekly uh, Zooms and stuff going on. I won't, I won't have time to keep working with this, but we're selling this for $4.90. says one payment of $4.97. Um, you can actually also get it. Um, there's also an option I'll show you. You can get it for um, four payments of $1.37 if you needed to break it up. Um, but you go to www.princetonoffenseoncourtpassport.com forward slash beta because we're still kind of putting everything together. So once once the beta is done and I've got everything in it that I want to be in it and it, be the kind of like the final version of it, the price might go from $4.97 back up to $9.97 to where I've actually sold that at $9.97 before. Okay. So all of the all of this, um, all, all of the, the, the two camps right now are in there, the, the Ohio camp, the Alabama camp, um, all of this, uh, the skill work, the, the all of my practice film that I will be adding, my high school film that I will be adding and, and editing and breaking down, um, the practice plans from all of the camps, from each day, each session, and then all of the bonuses, um, uh, all of the bonuses, my, my DVD, my college DVD system, um, uh, free ticket to an in-person clinic that's going to be announced next year. I've got a couple of them that, that are, oh, I'm, I, I can't wait. A couple I'm really kind of excited about. They're going to be, it's going to be different than, it's going to be different than me just going and working out with a team for two days. It's going to be, it's going to be a little bit bigger than that. I'm really kind of excited to get that going. And then the four week practice planning workshop. So go to Princeton offense on court passport.com for slash beta. And I'll email you that link as well. So you guys can take a look at it. Um, what I wanted to do here, this is when, when you go to that website, this is the order page. This is what this looks like. So you guys can kind of see, see what to do here. When you go to that uh, order page here, it kind of reminds you everything that's in here again. Actually, this is not completely updated. So this doesn't have um, the uh, the 20 plus hours because now with the girls video uploaded, um, it's it's about probably about 18 to 20 hours uh, available now. Will you just fill this out? Um, credit card name. And actually, here's the 497. You know what? I don't think I have the 137 option available. If you do want it in one... If you do want to get this in four payments of 137, I will add that to that right now. It's not on there. Um, just send me an email and I'll make sure that I update that tonight. But just click, click. There'll be, there will be two check boxes here if you need the other one that you can click here and it'll just charge your card 137 a month for four months and then it'll be done. Um, but but here's the order form. You go through this once you once you hit uh, once you hit complete my order, it's going to eventually you're going to get to a page that looks like this. You're going to hit this access purchase button. And what that's going to do is that's going to take you to this page. And this is going to be your private members area. Okay. Now, not everyone, not you, the on court passport, what, what you see, everything in orange and blue, this is all the workshop. So I've got two programs. I got one as a workshop where basically everything is, is in my office on this whiteboard behind me, uh, film breakdown. It, it's a 50, 55 plus hour program. Um, the on-court passport down here is everything that's video. Okay, so 
don't don't be it says you only get one tab there's like six tabs up here i was like yeah but there's there's one tab but all of the videos are inside of these three little tabs so so here is the ohio clinic and you can see if, if i go here and if i click on one of these these are this is all the skill work um in development that we did with the boys program here's all of the low here, here's all the x's and o's that we've done and there's about i've got about 18 to 20 videos set up right now so if you wanted to let's come down here a little bit um asking about the point series let's see if i got the point series in here i think i do it at the very end so here's point screen away out of low post so i would click on that open it up show you what happens when we actually run point Okay, there's a lot of movement here. Guards are going to get a lot at this. This is probably more. I apologize if that's a little choppy. It's for him. You guys are cutting. But if some of these videos are 30, 40 minutes a piece. It. Some of them are cut down a little bit to 15 right. minutes a piece. So it's kind of like using but here now I'm breaking down how to run is, point screen away. Through it, boom. And I'm, I'm just getting open the open spot. But right now we're going to back cut every single time. Okay, so come up and we're going to go back door. Just get your screening. Now you're being, you're chopping your feet, you're chopping your feet. Boom, you go back door. Now, that's your first look. Okay, back here. And anyway, so you, so you kind of get the point. Wow, that really zoomed out. So, so all of these videos are, are, are pretty much the offense start to finish. And I still have uh, the day three of this boys session. Add day one and day two of the boys sessions in there. Day three is not in there yet. Uh, here is the girls clinic. Here's the videos of the girls clinic. So, and these are actually right now, so these videos are um, just from the one camera. I'm still going to, I still need to edit. I've got two cameras from two different angles um, and I've got to edit them all together the same way I'm doing with the boys. And so eventually I will edit all those together. Here are the practice plans. Click on that button. Here pops up and here are the practice plans to what we did in that session. And that, and I think that first, first session was about two and two and a half hours, two hours and 45 minutes that first session. But here will be the practice plan. Eventually, if it'll pop up, internet's a little bit slow on uh, Thursday night. But here are all of here. Here's the entire clinic. So we did four varsity sessions, and we did a, one junior. They had the junior varsity kids. A couple were sick. A um, couple had church on Sunday, um, and plus they had volleyball games on Saturday. So we were very short with players. So we did one JV session, and then to add in there, we actually did a, a session with just the coaches on the floor and a couple of the assistant coaches in the program. So. Yeah, yeah, De Decker, really appreciate that. So, yeah, Decker was there. Uh, Decker was there online. Uh, Phil was there online. We had a couple. We had a few coaches there live as well, uh, in person. So, this is again, again, my philosophy is to teach you the entire Princeton offense, um, and uh, and then that way you can choose what's best um, for your players and your personnel. Um, I, I'm not. I'm not ever going to try to teach you to run the offense exactly the way that I ran the offense and, and say, you have to run it. This, you, I, I'm not going to tell you, you have to run the point series first and then spend a week on the point series. Now let's go to the chin series. Now spend a week there. Now spend a week on the, I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. And you know, we don't have collegiate players. We can't run the offense the way colleges, college programs, collegiate programs run this offense. We have to, um, and once you want actually, once you do get to a point where, you, where you're institutionalized, you've been running it for two or three or four years. Now you can start to run more and more because you don't, you don't have that steep learning curve, especially your first or second year or um, a couple coaches, Vic, for one, uh, he posted in one of the groups um, on one of my posts in the Princeton offense mastermind group. Uh, he posted, he, he, and he told me, he's like, I say, we're going home and we're reinstalling this a completely different way than what I was doing it because the way that we did it was much more efficient than the way that he was doing it. And that's what he got. That was one of the biggest things that he got out of the, um, out of the, the two day, uh, camp down there in Alabama. So, um, so that's pretty much what I got, what I have for you guys. So if you guys have any questions on this and I'll, I'll, I'll email you this link as well, but it's Princeton offense on court passport.com forward slash beta. Um, and while it's still in beta, it'll be four ninety seven, but it's actually going to close down Sunday at midnight. So then I can start up the, 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 the weekly practice plan workshops. And we'll probably do those on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, probably uh, mid to late afternoon. And then those replays will be available. And if you can't be there live, I will try to email you and get your questions so that I can answer your questions uh, during that. Or I can come back and re-record more video uh, to answer the questions that I did not uh, get answered, that you guys did not get answered in that if you weren't there live. Okay, so 
So if you guys do have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll, I'll spend here a couple more minutes, then I'm gonna, gonna hop off here. I didn't wanna go longer than an hour, so it's kind of hustled through um, as quickly as I could. Hopefully, um, hopefully you guys got a lot of value out of this. Um, but th this is the, the the workshop is really for the coach who who you want to take the deep dive and learn learn the entire offense. Um, uh, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a it was basically in an office set, and there's all kinds of I got my playbook, practice plans, and, and all the stuff in the workshop. But some coaches are more visual learners, and this program on court. Now, when we, we teach the entire offense in the workshop, so that you can see the whole the whole picture and all of the possibilities and all of the options and breaking down practice plans and playbooks and stuff like that and, and breaking down film. And this program is specifically designed so you can see it. Uh, uh, you can see it play out on the floor. Five on oh and five on oh five. And my kid is nuts back there. So I've got to, I've got to go get him. But anyway, if you have any questions, just send me an email coach at hoops detail.com or reply to one of the emails you, that you're, that I'm going to be sending out over the weekend. It's going to come down um, uh, Monday, or I'm sorry, Sunday, probably Sunday at midnight. Yeah, Phil was there online. Phil was awesome. Um, so I, I'm really glad that it helped you, uh, uh, Phil. I'm really glad that that Decker, uh, we Zoomed last week, and I'm really glad that that you guys are getting a lot out of this. Um, but this this is the, this is the, this is a, these are real practices. This isn't something that's that's edited to where the offense is not making any mistakes. And just showing you how to run the offense. This is actually, I wanted to do it this way so that you could actually see the players make mistakes, see me correct their mistakes, and then see them correct the mistakes on themselves and then learn it and move on. Because that's what it, that's how it really works for us in practices. Um, when, when you go watch a, a, a lot of other programs, sometimes they're just, they're just so perfectly done um, that, that you don't get all of the raw stuff. And you say, well, what happens if this happens? And you see these kids make all of these different mistakes. They probably made most of the mistakes that you can make. And then when you saw it, well, then we corrected them and then we fixed them. And then we moved, and once we got past that, we moved on to the next thing. So, um, so again, if you guys want to grab this, it's going to close down Sunday. I'll, I'll, I'll send you some email reminders, but it's www.princetonoffenseoncourtpassport.com forward slash beta. Um, I'll let you guys get out of here for the night. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Email me, uh, message me on Facebook, and I will see you guys over the weekend. See you, coach.